Now's the part of the show where I tell you that everything we've been learning for the last several weeks was completely unnecessary because all we really needed was functions to begin with in order to enable all of this behavior that we're seeing now. So let's go back and think about how we implemented recursive lists as functions. We'll do that again and we'll see that we can even add this mutation behavior and create cyclic lists just by using functions alone. Okay, so the object system is convenient. Defining classes is a good idea. Setting their attributes is a useful way of talking about data and making sure that we pair together that data with some behavior to create the metaphor of different objects talking to each other. This is all a good thing, but it's not actually necessary in order to create the kind of behavior that we want. We could have written these programs using just functions alone. Okay, so let's just do that. We'll start with an empty file. Define a constructor R list, which takes the first element and the rest of the list. By default, we'll represent the empty list as none. Now, what does this do? It returns um, a recursive list represented as a function. We'll save some space to add doc tests in a minute. So we're going to create a function which takes in a message and it's going to respond to that message using this message passing idea and those messages will ask for the same things that attributes would be naming when I was using the object system. So the message might be first, meaning please tell me your first element and then we'll just return first. The message could be rest, meaning please return the rest of the recursive list. And anything else we don't know how to do, we'll just call that unknown message. So we're gonna return this dispatch function every time somebody calls our list, which means that if I create an our list one, where the rest of the list is another our list containing two and three, what I have now is that s is a function, but it's a function that will respond to these messages. So I could look up the first element of s and it will tell me one. I can look up the rest of s and the first element of that recursive list and it will tell me two. And finally, if I look up the rest of the rest, the first element of that is three. Does this work? It tried S first, it expected one, and that was okay. Rest first is two, rest rest first is three. Okay, four tests pass. Everything looks good. But we don't actually have a way of mutating first and rest at this point. So we don't have the same functionality as we did before. But we can add that. So when we mutate a recursive list, we need to set first or rest to some new value. So let's pass in a value optionally if no values passed in, we'll just have not be the value. And if we're going to change first and rest, remember we need to use a non-local statement in order to do so. So first and rest might change. And how will they change? Well, if the message is assign a new value to the attribute first, we'll call that first equals, then what we're going to do is change first to be whatever value I pass in. And what else might we say? Well, we might say, please assign the rest to be something new. And then we'll assign the rest. Okay, so how could we actually use this? Well, similar to our example before, we could set first to be five. Nothing results, but if I look up first now, first is now five. Does everything work so far? Yes, it does. Now, can we create a cycle in this list? Let's try. So let's first assign t to be the rest of s, like we did before. And then let's assign the rest of t to be s. 
So now what S should be is it should be the first element five, followed by a recursive list that starts with two and then is followed by S, which starts with five, which follows by a recursive list that starts with two, etc. Which means that if I take S and I look up the rest and the rest of that and the rest of that and the rest of that and the rest of that, what's its first element? Well, let's run the test without filling it in just to see. And it will tell us that it got two. So if we put two in here and run our test again, we'll find that everything passes. We've created a cyclic recursive list using just this function where the recursive list is represented as a function itself, a higher order function. Remember the parent of dispatch will be the frame that was created when our list was called, which contains bindings for first and rest, which can be changed by these non-local assignment statements here and here, which are triggered by the messages first equals and rest equals. Now I could have used any messages I wanted to create this, but by choosing messages carefully, I can have object-like behavior without even using the object system.